Hey there! Today we are going to be reading a book named On That Easter Morning. It was written by Alana Pasquiali and illustrated by Allison J. One springtime, long ago, everyone was talking about Jesus of Nazareth. He is a wonderful storyteller, said the children. He welcomes everybody, said the outcasts. We believe he can work miracles, added those who were sick. He is someone who has changed our world, said Jesus' followers. He speaks of God's love for us and of God's forgiveness. It was the time of the great Jewish festival of Passover, and many people were traveling to Jerusalem. Jesus and his disciples also made the journey. Jesus asked two of them to go and fetch a donkey for him to ride into Jerusalem. Other travelers noticed him. It's Jesus, they said. He's riding to the city of King David. Riding, not walking. Perhaps that's a sign Jesus is God's new king. Some took off their cloaks and threw them on the ground for the donkey to walk on. Others cut palm branches and waved them in the air. As Jesus rode up to the city gate, there was a joyful uproar. People began shouting, God bless the king who comes in the name of the Lord. In the temple courtyard, everyone was busy with preparations for the Passover festival. Pilgrims were buying the special coins to make their offerings. There were animals for people to buy as sacrifices, and the air was filled with shouting and arguing. Jesus watched, and suddenly he grew angry. He walked to a stall piled high with coins and tipped it over. Get out, he shouted, buying and selling and cheating have nothing to do with the worship of God. The temple is meant to be a house of prayer. You are making it a den of thieves. The temple officials came running. How dare you do this, said one to Jesus. The man's mad, said another. We'll have to do something to get rid of him. For several days after that, Jesus continued to teach the crowds. He told them about the right way to live as true friends of Jesus. Meanwhile, his enemies were putting their plans together. These religious leaders and priests were delighted when one of Jesus' disciples, Judas Iscariot, came to visit them. We will pay you if you will help us find Jesus when the crowds aren't with him, they said. And the secret deal was done. The disciples were busy preparing for the Passover celebration. When everything was ready, Jesus and his disciples gathered in an upstairs room for a special meal. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and said a prayer of thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples. Take it and eat, he said. This is my body. Then he took a cup of wine, gave thanks to God, and gave the wine to them. Drink it, all of you, he said. This is my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The disciples looked at one another and wondered what it could mean. That night, Jesus and his disciples went to a shady olive grove. The disciples fell asleep, but Jesus spent the long hours praying to God. Father, he said, if it is possible, take this suffering away from me. Yet it is not what I want that must be done, but what you want. Jesus went back to the disciples, and as he did, Judas Iscariot appeared in the shadows with a band of armed men. Judas greeted Jesus with a kiss, but it was a sign to the soldiers. They arrested Jesus and marched him away to the house of Cephas, the high priest. The other disciples were afraid and ran away, but Peter followed at a distance. As the door slammed on Jesus, Peter sat outside the courtyard. I know you, said a servant girl walking past. You're one of Jesus's followers. No, I'm not, retorted Peter. 
I've seen you with him, said a man, peering at Peter's face. I don't know him, Peter insisted. As dawn approached, Peter found himself talking with servants. I can tell by the way that you talk that you're from Galilee, said one. You're one of Jesus' disciples. I don't know what you're talking about, hissed Peter, as a cockerel crowed to announce the dawn. At that moment, Jesus was pushed out of the door. He turned and looked at Peter sadly, for he had known that Peter would deny him. The religious leaders and chief priests took Jesus to stand trial before the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. This man, Jesus, claims to be our king, they told Pilate. That makes him a dangerous rebel. Pilate did not believe for a moment that Jesus was any threat to the peace, but the crowds outside were demanding Jesus' life. They had been stirred up by Jesus' enemies. So Pilate agreed to his crucifixion saying, I am not responsible for the death of this man. It is your doing. Pilate's soldiers dressed Jesus in a purple robe and made a crown of branches for his head. What a fine king you are now, they mocked. Then forcing a wooden cross onto his shoulders, they led him outside the city walls to a hillside. The crowds jeered at Jesus as they followed the procession. They stopped on the hillside called Golgotha, the place of the skull. The soldiers nailed Jesus to the wooden cross alongside two criminals and placed a sign above his head that read, The King of the Jews. Then they played a game to see who would keep the purple robe. Jesus did not struggle. He said a prayer. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they are doing. Nearby, his mother and a few of women wept. Although it was day, the sky was dark for three hours. Then, with a cry, Jesus died. Jesus was laid in a tomb cut out of solid rocks. His friends wept as the stone door was rolled into place. The next day was the Sabbath, the day of rest. Very early on the day after the Sabbath, the women who had been followers of Jesus came back. To their surprise, they found the door was open. As they looked inside the tomb, they gasped in fear. Jesus' body was gone, but sitting on the ledge was a figure dressed in white. Do not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. The women were amazed and went to tell the disciples. One of the women, Mary Magdalene, stayed outside the tomb weeping. Jesus came and stood beside her. Why are you crying? he asked. Mary thought he was the gardener. Because my Lord's body has gone, she replied. Mary, said Jesus. Then Mary recognized him. Tell my disciples that I have risen, he told her. Full of hope and joy, Mary ran to tell the disciples, Jesus is alive, she told them. I have seen him. Jesus appeared to his disciples many times over the next 40 days. He asked Peter, do you love me? Three times. Each time Peter replied, you know that I love you. Take care of my followers, Jesus said to him. Jesus reminded his disciples of everything he had taught them about God's kingdom and told them to spread the news so everyone could become his followers. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and went to tell the entire world of the miracle that happened on that Easter morning. The end, that is the end of our book. Thank you so much for joining us.